Howdy folks, uh, Eric Darling here with Eric Darling Data, and uh, I just realized that my, my VM is slightly off kilter, so I'm going to fix that before we continue recording. Uh, right, there, there we go. Yeah, I think that's better. Alright, yeah, now that's all framed up. Cool! Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, hopefully the rest of the video will be flawless. Uh, so this video is sponsored by um, a red pen. Thank you, Red Pen. What I want to talk about today... Oh, <clears throat> it's also sponsored by this pair of scissors. Thank you, scissors. What I want to talk to you about today is something kind of neat that I've been messing with. Uh, <clears throat> and it's been around for a while. It's not even anything remotely new. Uh, but it's called uh, SP Get App Lock. And it's a sy system store procedure that allows you to take a lock on kind of like an imaginary resource... Uh, so that you can serialize access to that resource. Now, I know that a lot of people, when they think about like locking and serializing access, they might think about table locks, right? Like, well, not table locks, but like locking an, <clears throat> a table or locking an index in some way, or like like doing a big intran and locking something that way. This is similar but different because you're not locking like a table or an index or anything else weird. You're just saying, I don't want anything else to be able to use this section of code while I'm using it. So I have a store procedure on this window, and this is called SP App Lock 1. And what SP App Lock 1 does is since I, I asked on Twitter and everyone seemed hip to uh, exact abort, I'm turning that on. And what this does is it, uh, oh, let me uh, knock this out so it's a little bit easier to read. So what this does is it calls SP Get App Lock and it locks a resource that I called Locko. Locko is not a table, not an index, not a view, not a thing. It's just an imaginary resource. I'm taking a session level lock and the lock mode is ex that I'm taking is exclusive. Now, I could take an exclusive or an update lock here in order to uh, serialize access to that lock, to that imaginary resource, but um, so I'm just, do I'm just doing exclusive because, I don't know, it, I, I, I'm feeling exclusive this evening. And after I take this lock, I'm going to update a table called lock me, and I'm going to set an ID column equal to two. Then I'm going to wait for 10 seconds and then I'm going to release the lock. Over in this window, I am doing nearly the same thing. Uh, uh, SP App Lock 2 will run. It will, I don't know why that's red, that's weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> SP App Lock will run. Uh, use Get App Lock, t try to take a lock on LockGo at the session level. Again, an exclusive lock, and this one's gonna set the ID in the LockMe table to three rather than two. Then this one is going to wait for 10 seconds, and then it's going to release the lock. This one also releases the lock at the end. I forget if I said mention that or not. Anyway, these are already created, so I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this, and then I'm going to show you a little bit more setup. So I have a table called LockMe, and LockMe has nothing to do with LockO. LockMe is just a table that both of those store procedures are going to try to update. Right now I have the ID 1 in that table, just the ID 1. I'm not playing any tricks with isolation levels here. The isolation level for this session that I'm running everything in is read committed. You can see that right down here. My isolation level is read committed. I'm not, I'm not using no lock. I'm not using read uncommitted. I'm not doing anything crazy like that. What I want to show you is two things. One, that you can use this to uh, take locks on a portion on a section of code rather than on like sort of physical objects in the database and what kind of locks that takes and how that can help you improve uh, sort of overall system concurrency. So I'm going to, I have to do this pretty quickly. I'm going to run SP get app lock one, run get two, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to run SP who is active and a select. The select query now returns ID two because that first store procedure set the ID to two. ID was one before, now it's two. So the first thing we see here is that uh, that table got updated, the update finished and it wasn't locked. Where it's interesting is when we look at SP who is active and we have the wait for from the first store procedure and we have this other query called XP user lock. SP get up app lock is a wrapper for XP user lock. 
If we look at the wait info for those two columns, we can see that we're about four and a half seconds into the wait for. Remember, there's a 10 second wait for in that in both store procedures. That's, that's the one from the first one running. And the second store procedure is waiting on an exclusive lock. But the exclusive lock that it's waiting on is not on the table. The exclusive lock that we've granted to the first store procedure is on LOCKO. And LOCKO is not a real thing. It's imaginary. But we've locked it so that nothing else can get in and run. This thing is, has taken an exclusive lock and it's been granted. All right, you can see that right there. Pretty cool. If we look at the lock XML for what the, the query that's waiting, in other words, the XP user lock query that's waiting, and we go down here, <clears throat> we can see that this one is attempting to lock LOCKO. LOCKO is like, right, it's trying to, just trying to take an exclusive lock on this. We can see the uh, exclusive request mode, but this one is being, oops, <laughs> try that again. This one is being forced to wait. So we have a waiting to get an exclusive lock. In other words, what we've done is we've uh, complete, we've run a store procedure, completed a modification to the table, so that, re that table is no longer locked. We were able to select ID2 from the lock. And then uh, we ran another store procedure that wanted uh, to do almost the same thing. But it wasn't waiting on the lock on that object. It was waiting on a lock on our imaginary LOCKO resource. If we come back to this window, now that nothing's running, these both finished, and we run this, and we select from lock me, now we're going to get ID3 back. So eventually, the second store procedure that was looking to set ID to 3 did run, and it did release everything. I could go back and forth showing you that if this would happen in a different order in the same way with if, if I did it with uh, SP app lock, if I re ex executed SP app lock 2 first and then SP app lock 1, if I changed the lock mode to update and all this other stuff, I would encourage you to go read a bit of the documentation about SP app lock uh, to learn more. Anyway, uh, that is about all the time I have before I go to bed because it's late. Uh, but I wanted to get this recorded just in case an asteroid hits tonight or something. Again, this video was sponsored by a red pen and a pair of scissors. So thank you to our gr generous sponsors. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time or whatever. Unless an asteroid hits. <laughs>